Happy, happy Friday, everyone. It's 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. Weather for Weather Geeks time. The final weekend of February is upon us, and so is an air mass change. It's going to be a brief one, but it's a significant one nonetheless. First of all, the numbers. Of course, it's been a mild week, and we had a mild day for today. Um, but on this date in weather history, we don't have to look too far back in the record books. Just last year, we had a record high. Uh, in 2023, it was 69 degrees on today's date. Now, we did not hit the upper 60s today, but it was still in the lower and middle 50s in most of the area, well above the seasonal average. All right, just a handful of days left in meteorological winter, and I think we've got second place uh, sewn up here on the list of warmest winters on record. We're not going to catch up to 1931-32. But I think with the warmth that's expected next week, we'll have no trouble staying above these next years on the list, including just last winter. Look how many recent years are here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these years since the turn of the century. So we've had some very, very warm winters in the last 20 years or so. Of course, we had some cold winters mixed in in the 2000s and then a couple back-to-back -back cold ones last decade, 2013 through 2015. But ever since the strong El Nino winter of 2015-2016, it's been really hard to get a legit cold winter around here. Bouts of cold, yes, but uh, enough to send us uh, below average for the winter season, not so much. The winter of 2017-2018, the closest we've come, that was almost exactly average temperatures that winter, but every other winter since 2015-2016 has been above the average by a fair margin. And no surprise with this kind of pattern that we're starting to see a leaf out occurring uh, not far to our south. Now, things are starting to pop out of the ground here locally. I noticed some crocuses starting to poke their heads above the soil at my place today, and some others chimed in on social media that they've had similar things. A couple of people have spotted bees of late. I saw a fly outside coming in today. So, you know, it just if you get uh, this much abnormal warmth, in the later stages of winter, you're going to start to see signs of spring. And the leaf out is occurring as nearby as southern Ohio and parts of southern West Virginia. Now, you know, this is a little bit nebulous as far as what this actually means. But, you know, I take it mostly as meaning the leaves or the uh, trees, I should say, getting buds on them. We're not quite at that stage around here, even though a few things are popping out of the ground. Um, more legitimate signs of spring, though, is nearby as Parkersburg, Marietta, Charleston, down towards Lexington, Kentucky, even, you know, not far south of Cincinnati. In the meantime, we do have a cold front that's pushing through right now, and this front did spark more showers than I was expecting today. In fact, we had a couple of hailstones, or soft hail, grapple perhaps, uh, reported to me on social media in parts of the area from Salem over towards New Middletown. Parts of uh, Lawrence uh, and Mercer County had a little bit of small hail earlier on. Uh, in you know some legit downpours for a time. There was even some, uh, pardon me, some thunder and lightning down in this region, down closer to Dover, New Philly, Carrollton, Delroy, places like that around mid-afternoon today. Our cold air is on the move, though, and, you know, we spiked in the mid-50s today, but we've already dropped to 39 at the airport just in the last probably four or five hours, and look how much colder the air mass is just to our north, and it's coming our way. Um, so, you know, this is going to be an abrupt change, but it's going to be just as abrupt the change in the other direction coming our way by Sunday. In the meantime, we have a little weather system out here towards Chicago. Uh, this is going to be a miss for us, but this is kind of a sneaky little system that's going to bring some accumulating snow to Indianapolis, Dayton, uh, parts of the Cincinnati and Columbus areas as well. Here's one model depiction of the uh, snow through tomorrow morning. You know, the road surfaces are pretty warm, even though this is coming at night. Uh, you know, there's going to be some slushy inch, two inches, perhaps up to three inch amounts. Especially, you know, right around Fort Wayne down to Dayton, maybe the Lima area, uh, parts of the Columbus metro, parts of the Cincinnati metro, especially uh, northern suburbs there. In the meantime, back here in northeast Ohio and western PA, we'll start with clouds Saturday. We'll end the day with abundant sunshine, but it's not going to do us a whole lot of good. Now, the sun, of course, is pretty strong in late February compared to a month ago. So, you know, wall-to-wall -wall sunshine beating down on you in the afternoon, it's going to feel pretty nice, even though the temperatures are going to struggle and we'll have a, you know, a fickle breeze as well to kick off the weekend. But a warm front lifts through first thing Sunday morning, and we'll start in the teens, but end up not far from 50 Sunday afternoon. Big diurnal range on Sunday. And then this next front kind of falls apart as it comes east. In fact, Monday will be even warmer. Maybe we get grazed by a shower Sunday night, but Monday is looking pretty nice. Mostly sunny skies as a lot of us head back to work and school early next week. The numbers for the uh, weekend, 32, the best we can do tomorrow. Wind chills mostly in the 20s. 47, though, on Sunday after starting out around 18. I wouldn't be surprised if some local thermometers touched 50 
uh, before the day is through on Sunday. Long range forecast from the Climate Prediction Center. We're going to cover the 6 to 10 day outlook, the 8 to 14 day outlook, and the week's 3 and 4 outlook, and they all have kind of the same theme, right? Um, probably pretty active. You know, several chances of wet weather, certainly, but limited chances for snow going into March with this kind of a pattern. Now, can it snow in March? Yeah, I'm not going to discount that possibility. But with this kind of a pattern, I think our frozen precipitation opportunities will be lower than average. I mentioned on social media today, I'm not going to say winter is over around here on February 23rd. you got to remember where we live. But the fat lady is, you know, perhaps starting to warm up those vocal cords just a little bit. Let's talk about uh, March and uh, just real quickly talk about what the models are showing compared to analogs. If you're kind of new to the idea of analogs, this is something we use in long-range forecasting. We look back at past years that had similar conditions worldwide to what we have now or what we're expecting to happen or, or the conditions we expect to have, I should say, in the not-too-distant uh, future. Basically, I took all the recent-ish, going back to 1950 anyway, uh, marches uh, with a fading El Nino that was pretty strong. Not the real weak El Ninos, but ones that were moderate strong or very strong. And I took all those marches and tossed them together and got an average. And the map looks like this. Cooler than average weather favored here. Warmer than average weather favored across the northern tier of states. Kind of looks like the winter El Nino map, to be honest, uh, with uh, this being a pretty typical setup for uh, the winter season in El Nino. What about the modeling? Here's a look at uh, the most recent run of the CFS climate forecast system uh, for March. Temperature anomalies here. And it looks kind of like the analogs, right? Cool here. Maybe a little cool in parts of the south, but warmth favored across the northern tier of states and actually the European long range looks kind of similar to that kind of the same idea you know it's not gonna be exactly the same as far as what it's showing but it's kind of the similar flavor with cool weather favored out in these areas and warmer weather favored up here I think locally uh, in Northeast Ohio and Western PA at least the first week to 10 days of March will be fairly far above the average could there be a pattern change second half of the month I don't want to close the door on that possibility yet but I'm not real confident in that. I'm not real confident that there'll be some stratospheric warming events that flush a bunch of cold down into North America. I wouldn't rule that out, but I wouldn't bank on it at this point either. That, the jury's definitely still out on that. So until we get some sort of an increase in confidence that we would get a cold discharge from the Arctic, you know, you just got to forecast persistence. The uh, This is the way it's been all winter. Cold in the longer range just disappears way too often as you get closer to that period. Um, weeks three and four have been advertised as cold frequently over the last few months and very rarely has it actually worked out. Until proven otherwise, we're going to kind of, you know, put our eggs in that basket for the time being. Thanks for watching tonight and all week long on Weather for Weather Geeks. Hope you and yours have a great weekend. I will see you back here on Monday for the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video.